In this session, you'll learn how to get customers to find you and buy from you in just four steps, what key marketing metrics you should be tracking, and how to never run out of marketing ideas again. This was a pre-recorded coaching session for our Wandering Infly Unlimited members. You can learn more about that at wanderinginfly.com slash join. But for now, just enjoy the free session. Hello and welcome to Marketing and Promotion. This is our spotlight session on a big nebulous topic. All right, let's get into part one, the explainer. So let's break down marketing, because yes. this is a big old topic, yes. into concepts and tactics to help you find new customers and sell to them. I would hope that's why all of you are watching this. Yes. Uh, which of these do you struggle with the most related to marketing? Is it knowing what marketing is? It's such a big umbrella topic. Like marketing, what is marketing? What is marketing? Number two, coming up with ideas for getting new people into your audience. Number three, getting your audience to engage more with your marketing tactics. Or number four, knowing which new marketing tactics to try with limited time, money, and resources. We're so gonna we're tackle all of that in this session. Mm -hmm. So it's not just mm -hmm. one, two, three, or four. We're gonna do all of it and you all can do this dance that you want at home. We're gonna go through a marketing framework. We're gonna break these down in three sections. Individual tactics and then your strategic Did plan. Pause for, yeah, go ahead. I love a visual language. Did you see it's the pieces coming together uh -huh. and then we break each piece apart and right. then we reassemble the parts into a plan. Okay, wow. okay, okay. Did wow. I spend p potentially too much time on that? Probably. This is our marketing bridge framework. And yeah, I threw a TM on it. I'm sure we didn't come up with this, but no. I- We also haven't legally believe, trademarked it. So. We have not trademarked it, yeah. but like, anyway, you will hear us talk about this marketing bridge concept all over Wayne. And it's just because I think it is so useful. So for those of you who do not know the story time of the Marketing Bridge framework, I'm gonna give you the kind of Cliff's Notes version, version here. So on the right hand side of your screen, you have your castle, okay? And your castle is your offer. And it lives on an island of your business out in the middle of the ocean. And way over here on what we call the mainland, that's where everyone's hanging out, okay? Yeah. They're on Instagram, they're on Pinterest, they're on Reading blogs. Reading blogs, they're, listen to podcasts. They're on the mainland of the internet and they're just like bebopping around, but your offer is just over there. Look how far away On your island in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. And what you need to do is find a way to connect the people on the mainland over to your offer. And that is marketing, okay? That is your marketing bridge and it is the framework of everything that we are gonna talk about when it comes to marketing. Now, if you're interested in kind of diving deeper, if you're like, wait, that didn't really make sense, we're not gonna spend time going too much into it here. Definitely check out our very first coaching session ever, which was our Marketing Bridges session in your coaching hub, because it'll walk you through a little bit more slowly. But we are gonna go through each step. Um, you'll get the gist. You'll get the gist as yeah. we go along. But just remember this idea that your bridge is what connects people who are hanging out on the internet over to your offer. You need to build that connection, and that's what marketing really does. And so there are four main stages of your marketing bridge, right? So we already talked about your castle is your offer. So basically when someone walks through that door of your castle, that's when they purchase. Okay, that's the stage of purchase. Over here on the mainland, people are hanging out and when you get your brand in front of them, that would be the stage of awareness. But there are a couple steps in between there, right? So we have, you bring people from awareness over to interest, Oh, I'm, I'm interested in your brand. They're on the bridge. I didn't know about you, but then I became aware of you and then I became interested in you. And then, oh, now I'm in the third stage, which is consideration. Like, oh, I'm really considering potentially buying from you. And then finally I move to purchase, right? So you have awareness, you have interest, you have consideration, you have purchase. You're gonna see some variation of this in like a marketing funnel framework. This is a very well-known concept. However, I think what's more helpful instead of thinking of these very intangible aspects or stages, I decided to assign a verb to every stage instead so that you can remember what am I trying to do at this stage with my customer. So of course, in the awareness stage, you're just trying to find people, right? At the beginning of your bridge, like where are they hanging out? Where's my ideal customer? For the interest stage, you're trying to nurture that connection. You're trying to build trust. You're trying to kind of provide value, show them that you know how to solve their problems. For the consideration stage, that's where you're gonna really propose your offer or the fact, you're gonna basically let them know that you have something that they can buy. That's your proposal. And then finally, sell. That's the purchase stage. That's ultimately the verb that you're doing, right? So find, nurture, propose, and sell. These are the four main stages of your marketing bridge. And so now let's dive into each one of these deeper and show you with an example of basically what that bridge looks like in a practical way. With Wave Unlimited, Wave Unlimited as the example, because you all are pretty familiar with what our marketing bridge is. So yeah. remember, ultimately we're trying to sell Wayman Limited. 
How are we gonna find people? Let's say one of our marketing tactics to find people is our articles, which is true. We have written tons and tons of articles. People come to our website through Google search. They find one of our articles. Then we get them into our email newsletter, which is the way that we typically nurture um, that connection. We send out a Monday newsletter every week. And then twice a year, we have a sales launch, right? Where we're proposing to people, hey, we have Wayman Unlimited available for purchase. And we have a two week sequence in order for them to purchase Wayman Unlimited. So at its most simple, like this is our marketing bridge. And of course we'll get into like all the, how these all sort of start to cross populate and multi-channel things. But like at its most simple, these are our four stages. And then ta-da, they buy, right? We get money. You buy. Which is fantastic. It's fantastic. Yeah. But just to show you how this framework, I want you to start thinking about like in every single transaction of business, you can start to see the stages of this marketing bridge. So this was just an example that I came up with is like, remember? I love buying encyclopedias. Encyclopedias. Love okay, people them. would yeah. sell encyclopedias. We had a set growing up. And let's say the way that I find people if I'm an encyclopedia saleswoman is I go door to door. I literally knock on doors. That's how I find a person on the mainland. And the nurture part of my marketing bridge is gonna be like, I'm gonna get I'm just friendly. I'm gonna be like, oh, what do you need? Do you have kids what do you want to learn? What do you want to learn about? What always, dinosaurs are your favorite? Exactly. Yeah. Aren't they always wanting to learn about dinosaurs? And then at some point, I'm gonna kind of give my sales pitch of like, this is why you need encyclopedias. And then ultimately, I'm gonna sell my encyclopedias. But the point of this is to show you, even with something so different as like selling encyclopedias door to door, essentially the sales process is still this four stage process, even though it's happening on a much quicker timeline. Very similar, if you have a client business, let's say I'm selling a branding package, let's say I find people by past client referral. So they're actually gonna go out and find clients for me. And this is like one of our tactic categories that we'll get into in a second, which is like partnership marketing. But let's say through referrals, then you could, your nurture could actually just be a free consultation call, right? Where you're like getting to know each other. You're saying, tell me about the problems in your branding. What are you looking for? Like that's where the nurturing is happening, even though it's just on a phone call. And then when you send that proposal email of here's how I can help you, that's sort of your proposal stage. And then ultimately you sell a branding package, branding package, right? Just to show you how this can apply to all different types of businesses. So for you, what we really want to figure out is what is your one offer, your one customer, and your one path? Like if you're really starting from scratch on what is my marketing, I, we want you to think of one offer, one customer, one path. So remember your offer is gonna be your castle, your customer is gonna be who you're targeting over on the mainland, and then we need to figure out what this path is through these four stages. So where and how will you sell your offer? That's what you need to figure out for the sell stage. Where and how can you find your target customer for that offer? That's in the find stage. Where and how will you deliver value and build trust? And then where and how will you propose your offer, right? So at its most simple, this is marketing. And it's a very big term, but if you really break it down, if we could answer these four questions, you're on your way to figuring out what your marketing strategy is. So one offer, one customer, one path. This is why we actually started out with our foundation and offer spotlight sessions. So we were very strategic about the order that we took these in. So the foundation spotlight was really about like, what is going to be my message when I do interact with that customer and who are they, right? Like who is a big part of the four Q's foundation. And then if you were here for our offer session live, that was where we really talked about aligning your offer with your audience. And then also talked about pricing, remember, and getting that value proposition really dialed in so that when you have those in place, now the path is all we need to figure out. Again, just to reiterate, the foundation is going to really help you with like finding who that person is and then offer is going to help you with selling. So now that you know the basic framework of the four stages, let's break down each step into its individual tactics so that you have an endless supply of ideas to experiment with at all four of these different stages. I just went like went on a roll. That's okay. Uh, do you ever feel stuck thinking, how do I find new people for my audience? How do I build trust so more people want to buy from me? or do people just not realize my offer exists? This next part might get a little bit overwhelming for some of you, but the purpose is not to overwhelm you, it's to offer you an epic list of marketing tactics to experiment with so you're never left feeling stuck when it comes to marketing again. We just really want this to be a point where you can come back to this session, you could jump right back to this section of the replay of this section and go, okay, I don't know what I wanna do with marketing. I'm feeling lost, I'm feeling like I have no ideas. You start watching this again and you get all these ideas that we're about to share with you and you go, great, now I know what to do. I shut this session down, I just watched the video for five minutes and I know exactly what to work on next. This was my dream for this entire session was from the very beginning, I was like, 
I just have this dream of like a list, yeah. a list that you can go back to all the time where when you feel stuck and you feel like there's not possibly any other way that I could find new people to be in my audience or how to like supercharge my newsletter. Like I want you to be able to go back to this list. And so we talked about it for a long time because again, we know the risk is that it might be overwhelming. Don't get overwhelmed. Just remember this list exists for you to like go digging through, but you can filter it in order to find the tactics that are right for your business. One other addendum to the word of caution, which is, you're not gonna read a bunch of mind-blowing marketing ideas that you've never heard of before. The reason you're not going to read those is because we don't know if those work. What we are sharing with you are proven tactics that work, and we're not saying we've used all of them, but they're very common, mm -hmm. and they may just be things you've never done before. So I just and wanna share that, like, you're gonna read this list and go, oh, I've heard of all these things. Yes, you have. Have you tried them all? Have yeah. you experimented with them all? Have you put them into practice for your business? And what I'm really excited about too, which we'll talk about when we get into like the Notion section or the workbook, is, I would love for this going forward for this list to also act as a way for you to keep inspiration. So when you have a keen eye and you see someone doing like, oh, I've never seen anyone kind of do that before. Oh, they're offering a free Voxer from their Instagram, whatever. Figure out where that fits, which exactly. stage that would fit in, add it to this list, put a little screenshot that you saw. So you have this like ongoing list of ideas to pull from at any moment. Great. But then we're gonna teach you the strategy of how to put that plan in place, right? Okay, so again, we're alluding to this, but if you haven't looked at the Notion workbook yet, this is what we're alluding to. So there's a long list of ideas for every stage of this. So you have find ideas, you have nurture ideas, you have propose ideas, and you have sell ideas. And they're also separated by channel, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, so you can go through and check off which ones you want to try or which ones you are interested in. Just in the find category alone, you have 47 ideas. <laughs> Yeah. So if you're thinking to yourself like, oh, like I've tried a bunch of marketing stuff. Have you tried all 47 ideas? Because if the answer is no, then you have plenty of things to and try. And of course, not all of them are gonna apply to every business. Absolutely. But like I said, in every single page, what the way that I'm gonna use it, I'm using this for us as well. And you'll see how in the Notion section, I'm gonna keep like an inspiration file for each tactic. And so whenever I come across that tactic and I like the way that somebody is doing something, I'm gonna be able to keep that inspiration there so that I'm like, oh, that's an interesting way I hadn't thought of you know, doing that on that platform before. Cool? So just a reminder that that is available to you and it's also available in the Google Doc form. It's just not gonna be a database. It's, I, I made tables for you. So again, let's break down each of these steps step by step. Find, nurture, propose, and sell. This is marketing at its simplest. So the find stage. To come up with find stage marketing ideas, define where and how you plan to find strangers who fit your target customer profile. Where are these people hanging out and how can you connect with them? So again, the goal here for this find stage is to find new leads, right? Five categories, first one being content marketing, second one being one-on-one -on -one direct, third one being partnership marketing, fourth one being paid advertising, and then fifth one being word of mouth. There's like a little bit of muddy crossover, but here's, sure. I'll tell you how I think about these. Content marketing is gonna be your typical SEO, your foundation articles, uh, so that people find you through search. Any type of content that you're creating, putting on a platform, all of your social media platforms, if you're creating content on that platform, the idea is you're pushing it out, people are finding it, and that's how they're getting introduced to your brand, right? So then that's pretty self-explanatory. One-on-one -on -one direct is Personally, I think especially when you're getting started, kind of underutilized, but it's just, it is just putting in the Everything's hours. cold. Your cold emails, your cold DMs, your cold calls. And listen, like none of us like particularly love getting cold communication, but sometimes if you are just trying to get something started, like I would not be above doing that. You yeah. know what I mean? To really try to get clients. And so I just want to remind everyone that this is available to you. I mean, I don't recommend going door to door to look for. Not anymore. But like back in the day, Jason and I were very, like way back in the day when Made Vibrant was getting started, I was very close to creating like a one page website for restaurants in my town and going into the physical location and being like, hi, I made you a website. Would you like to pay for it? Yeah. So again, like I said, I'm not above it. And then, okay, the biggest category by far, I think, is this partnership marketing category. And I kind of subdivided it in, into inside partners and outside partners. Inside partners, I think, are anything that's like already customers. So referral marketing or affiliates of people who are already customers. So if you are a, an affiliate for Wayman Unlimited, you're kind of an inside partner, right? And so you're gonna go out and share us with your audience, and that's how we're finding new people is through you. But some things that I feel like people don't often think about are guest content. So like some of the communities you're a part of or some of the software that you use, like going to them and being like, hey, can we do some type of collaboration? Because there's already a relationship there. 
And then another thing is testimonials and case studies. So like if we produce testimonial or case study videos of some of you who have really loved Wayme and how it's transformed your business, you would probably then go share those testimonials, right? And be like, hey, like Wayme featured me and did this thing. That's another way of potentially introducing your audience to us. And then... Nope, that's your keyboard. That's my computer. <laughs> And then separate from that would be like outside partners. So these are people who aren't necessarily your customers, but you're utilizing audiences that they have already built in order to expose your brand to their audience. Things like collaborating with other creators or businesses. A lot of you mentioned like the summits, right? Yep. The um, guest podcasting or one that I feel like doesn't get talked about is community participation. So just being a part of WAME and getting exposure to other people in the community or being in online spaces where you're not a paid member, but you're just sort of like showing up in the Instagram account comments of someone, an account that a lot of your potential ideal clients might follow as well. And you start to get some of that brand awareness. They find you, they go back to your profile, et cetera. Events, um, marketplaces I even put in this category because I think like you're kind of using, for example, the Etsy audience. You're using a marketplace audience, creative market. You're using their audience in order to expose yourself to their um, traffic. Uh, PR even, you're using kind of their readership outside affiliates. People, because outside affiliates are a thing too where people are just, they sell affiliates but they're not even a customer of the thing. That's just not something that we do but it is, it does yeah. exist. Paid advertising would be all the options, but you pay for reach, right? So you're paying for Google ads, you're paying for social ads, you're paying for direct mail, sponsored events, yada, yada. And then word of mouth would be, I think anything where you're investing kind of in your product and your experience and your offer so much so that people have no choice but to go talk about you. So um, it could be things like creating, creating a way for people to gift your offer, um, creating some type of experience, like throwing an event and then people talk about you where they take photos at your event and they're like, oh, I'm at such and such sponsored event. Um, a weird marketing campaign where you get talked about, you get word of mouth. Um, Product-led marketing, meaning like you're focusing on your product and that is kind of what's doing the growth for you, encouraging user-generated content. So I, any of that I put in this category. But like, wow, this would be like a slide that I would just screenshot and be like, okay, in the future, if I'm ever thinking to myself, I don't know where to find new people, hopefully this entire slide will help you at least spark an idea and go, I haven't tried that yet or I haven't really given that a go. And then there are gonna be pros and cons to each one of these categories, right? And so this is where it really comes down to what are your resources and what do you think that you, which of these five would be like a good idea for you to focus on? So we'll just touch on some of the pros and cons of each. So for content marketing, this is gonna be by far your, the biggest time investment. However, it is free, right? And so this is why I feel like a lot of us lean on content marketing because we go, well, it's free but it is taking up a lot of time. And this is always the balance that we try to tell you all with like social media especially, is what's that return that you're getting out of it? So there is a longer time to see results because the connection is the weakest. So like if you think about talking to someone one-on-one -on -one and how much context they get with you and how much trust can be built in a short amount of time versus just swiping past one of your pieces of content on Instagram, for example, that's why it takes so much longer for content marketing to work. And it's because you're building trust like one little brick at a time instead of like full big boulders at a time. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's really about volume then and just making a commitment to going, okay, I am going to post consistently or I'm at least going to have a strategy, which we talk about often of I'm going to go on for two months, on, off, you decide, but it is going to take a time commitment. One-on-one -on -one direct is going to be, trust is going to be built a lot faster. Um, it does take time and it does take thick skin because you're going to get a lot of no's, but you're in complete control because it's a sheer numbers game. Like if you know that if you just reach out to X amount of people, you're going to get at least, you know, one to two interested people onto a consultation call. This is, I feel like a really good tactic, especially for client businesses because your offers tend to be higher prices. And so you need less people. Partnership marketing, there could be some cost involved here, like commissions, like affiliate marketing, like that's a hefty price that we pay, but, and it does take energy and networking and kind of pouring into relationships, but it can work more quickly than content because there is built-in trust there. I, I have a suspicion that a lot of you like some, some of the summits and the podcasting because there is that built-in trust already, right? Um, and it's fun to network and to meet people um, and to kind of get exposure to their audience as well. 
Paid advertising, listen, it takes money and it takes knowledge in order to do it well, but if it works, it works really well because it's just a math game at that point, right? Like if you have the capital to put into it, it can work. The reason we don't use it is because we don't have the, you know, we never invested in the knowledge to do it really well. And we- And when we did, it just didn't work. And we love the challenge yeah. of kind of building organically. That's yeah. just our preferred. Um, but of course, if we were at the beginning of our journey again and we had no choice, like we would probably put that back on the table. But it does take money and some risk. And then finally, word of mouth. Um, this is hard to control or predict, but there is a huge upside. So this is also something that we like to put our energy towards, which is, can we just create an experience that is above and beyond what people expected or is different in some way or is unique? And hopefully people will talk about us in that way. Now, I wanna take a second to talk about channels and tactics. So if the goal for find is to find leads, remember we talked about you wanna look at where you're finding them and how you're finding them. So where might be Instagram, and this is gonna be your channel. But how could be different things. It could be, oh, I'm gonna do 30 reels in 30 days. It could be, I'm gonna guest post on some big accounts. It could be, I'm gonna do cold DMs. And all of these are gonna be your tactics, right? So channel is gonna be where you find them and tactics is gonna be how you find them, just to kind of define our terms here. And in your epic marketing tactics list, you'll see that we have assigned a channel for each tactic. And so the, the lists themselves are tactics, but then each one is separated by channel. So I just wanted to point that out. So let's move on to nurture. That was find. Lots, lots to cover there in find because I have a suspicion that a lot of you, that's where you need to focus is like, how do I find new people? Yeah, and just as a reminder, for those of you who are saying that you're screenshotting these slides, which is fantastic, we love that you're excited. After the coaching session in the replay, we always give you the slides so you can download those too. But you can screenshot your favorites and you can Absolutely. save them. But just as a reminder for anybody, especially who's new, you do get all the slides afterwards. Great. Moving on to our stage to nurture. So the goal with this stage is really to stay top of mind with your potential customer and to build trust. So where and how will you stay top of mind and build trust? That's the question you're trying to answer. And just as some exam examples, this is gonna be your content salad fixins, right? So it's gonna be your email newsletters, your podcast episodes, your YouTube videos. It can even be your social media content. So part of the purpose for creating content on social media is not just to find new people, but it's to nurture people who are following you and to really build context and trust with them. Um, but it could also be email, just like straight up one-to-one -one emails, especially if you're a client business, following up with people um, who maybe have, have reached out to you, but they haven't decided to work with you yet. It's really following up and nurturing that relationship. Um, or even if you're on a Zoom call, let's say you're doing like a demo call with your product or you know, if you're in software or something like that, or a consultation call, remember that's where you're building rapport. That's where you're building trust. And because really someone's ability to say, I want to hire you to do this job relies on their trust that you're gonna be able to solve their problems. So that's what you're trying to do there. There's also SMS, there's retargeting ads even, which is really just to stay top of mind. And even dynamic uh, website content, which we still do on our site, mm -hmm. um, but we use tools so that if you're already an email subscriber, you're going to get something like, oh, hey, check out our guide on this. Instead and, of an email instead form. Instead of saying, seeing an email form, which is kind of like unnecessary um, real estate at that point. So that's an example of how we're nurturing people further of just delivering more value and building more trust. So again, look for your nurture um, tactics are gonna have the little heart by them under the nurture category on your epic list. And then over here, you can see that is where they're listed out by channel as well. Cool, let's get to propose. So your goal here is to introduce your offer and there are many different ways uh, of how you're gonna do that. So where and how will you introduce your offer? You can do it via email with open and closed launch sequences. You can do it via automated evergreen email pitches. You can do it via newsletter ads. So you have like little segments of your newsletter top and bottom. You have a webinar where you do a pitch uh, during the beginning of the end of the middle. You have your podcast. You can use the pre-roll, the mid-roll, the post-roll to do ads for yourself. Article product or your articles can spotlight your different products. You can have social announcements, obviously. You have your website where you can have an announcement bar. You have paid ads. You have gift guides and roundups with partnerships. And you have email via client proposals. Totally. Let's move to the fourth section here, which is sell. So where and how will you make the sale? The goal here is obviously to make the sale. To make the so sale. So you can have a sales page. You can have we a do. marketplace listing. You can have a proposal email. You can uh, be in person at an event. You can have a phone call. You can have a limited time offer page. You can have a bundle sales page. Or you can have a daily deal site. 
And the key here is to not just say, you just have a sales page and then people can buy things. It's, can you think about selling things in multiple different places so that you're kind of getting different ways for people to find out about your thing? So for many of you who sell just things on Etsy, that's great, you're using the marketplace, but you can also create a sales page on your own site to sell those things because you may capture an entire different audience who's finding you a entire different way that's not finding you on Etsy. So you can still sell to them. Yeah, and it doesn't mean you have to do all of these things, but again, it's giving you the opportunities and the options so that if you really need to make something happen, you go, you know, I hadn't really thought about selling my templates on some of these like bundle sites. Maybe I should do some research to reach out to where I could potentially sell those, right? Yep. So, All right, so now that you know the taxes, it's still me, Carol. I know I, you're okay, excited. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, we're gonna build these into your unique bridge and plan. Let's build. Now it's you, Carol. Okay. I get to have my slides too. So we've talked about this before, but I think there's gonna be some of you who are kind of in the build category and some of you who may be in the optimized category. And because marketing is such a big topic, there's, I think, gonna be two different ways to go about utilizing this information we just took you through. So if you're in the build stage, I think this is really those of you who maybe still haven't found a marketing channel that leads to reliable sales. So if you still feel like you haven't found that path, that first path that we showed where it's like email newsletter, it's like SEO, email newsletter, sales sequence, sales. Like we did that enough times that we were like, this is reliable. If you have not found that reliable, reliable path yet, you would be in the build category. And if you have a reliable marketing channel, but you're looking to boost conversions throughout your bridge or boost your traffic at the beginning of your bridge or even start to like expand out your channels, you'd be kind of in the optimized category. So let's first talk about what we would recommend you do if you're in the build stage. So if you're in the build stage, you're going to try to mix and match tactics to connect your one offer with your one customer through one path. And again, it doesn't mean only the, you can only do the one path. It just means like that's what you're aiming for is like a reliable pathway to take someone from stranger to buyer, right? So you're gonna have your offer on the sell side. And then like, let's just say for an example, you're gonna list out, you know, okay, in my find category, I'm gonna use outside partnership tactics. I'm gonna try to do guest pod podcasting. I'm gonna try to do guest summits. And I'm gonna try to do some like email swaps, some collaborations of like, I go on their email newsletter, they go on mine, expose myself to other audiences. That's gonna be my strategy. I'm gonna to try to get all of that traffic into my newsletter, and then I'm gonna do an open and close launch email three, three times a year, four times a year, whatever you wanna do. And that's gonna be my path. Like you really wanna fill this out in the workbook or just write it down on a piece of paper of what you're trying to aim for. And if you're really, you don't know what to do, we would recommend go with this kind of recipe, which is three plus one plus one, meaning three find channels trying to funnel all of those into one nurture channel and one proposed channel. Because really that nurture to propose to sell, you really wanna to start to taper off that strategy so that you're only focusing on one journey. So, so it's like, I don't need to worry about a podcast to nurture people, I just wanna do the email exactly. newsletter. Um, but your fine channels, you're probably gonna to wanna to diversify a little bit because you know, it's just, it, you're gonna want volume and you're gonna want more people, but again, trying to push them to that one nurture channel. So three plus one plus one, if you're in the build and you just need a simple recipe formula to think about. And remember, I think also a good strategy is to start by picking the channel and then pick your tactic within that channel. So that's why I wrote three channels, one nurture channel, one proposed channel. And remember, channels are the where. So it's like, okay, I really wanna focus on Instagram or I only wanna focus on one-to-one -one email or I only wanna focus on podcasting. Um, Cause I think that's gonna help you go, where am I more adept? Like what platforms do I know the best? And then you can go like, now I can kind of experiment and play within those platforms. So to you know, take you through another example, if I'm trying to sell a client package, maybe I say my three plus one plus one are gonna be Instagram, email referrals, email collaboration, and then I'm gonna nurture them, trying to get all three of those. So I'm gonna figure out how do I get all three of those into my email newsletter? How do I come up with some, you know, a custom email proposal that I can send someone via email? And then how do I sell? I'm gonna do that through that email invo invoice when someone says, great, I wanna buy this um, from the proposal. And now you may be going like, oh, I'm selling a client package. Now, what is happening here between my email newsletter and then I'm sending someone a custom email proposal for Ooh, a design package? Like, how am I getting those people? How, what, how, I'm not gonna send that to every person on my email newsletter, so how's that happening? And the answer is we have a whole second part of this explainer that we got to get through, okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. there's some hidden stages in between these stages. We also have some marketing recipes coming up here in a couple so of minutes that are going to be fun for you. So much. So don't forget in this epic list that you can search by channel. So if you're using the Notion checklist, 
in the little search bar um, up at the top right hand corner, type in a channel. So type in email and you're gonna see only the tactics that are in that channel. And then each of the stage, you just open the little toggle and so you can see each tactic by stage. So again, I'm typing podcast, I'm typing email, I'm typing Instagram. That's another way for you to very quickly filter through a list that can be a little bit overwhelming. So wanted to point that out. So build three plus one plus one. For my optimized folks. Take it to level two. Let's take it to level two, okay? So if you have a bridge path that's working, but you want to supercharge it, you want to boost conversions throughout that bridge, you can start to add guideposts mm. between your bridge stages to make the path to your offer more frictionless. So if you're wondering about this, we said the four stages, but here's the secret. There's actually kind of like stages between each one. Mm. So we have attract, which is going to pull people from your fine channel to your nurture channel. We have excite, which is gonna be really about pulling people from the nurture stage over to the proposed stage. We have assure, which is gonna be really about trying to pull people from the propose over to that sell. And then we have a reassure after you make the sale, which is going to hopefully make people so excited that they go and tell new people and the cycle begins again because they find new people for you. And this is the beautiful cycle of marketing. So let's dive into each one of these because these are your guideposts between each of your bridge stages. So these tactics make a customer much more likely to move along down your bridge towards your offer. So let me show you how that works. So we have our four stages. Let's say we have the SEO articles to the email newsletter. This to, looks very familiar, To the right? sales this sequence to the Wayman Limited. But remember we have attract is let's say a lead magnet, okay? So that is what is going to supercharge the bridge from someone lands on an article and they get over to my email newsletter, that is why people offer lead magnets. If you're like, what is the marketing purpose behind lead magnets? It's this attract stage. It's the connective tissue between the find stage and the nurture stage. That's why so many people use it because they're trying to pull people onto that nurture stage bridge. And then between nurture and propose, that's gonna be all about excite. It's gonna be building buzz, right? And so this is your pre-launch buzz. Before that two week sales sequence, how are you getting people excited that your launch is coming up? Are you doing like a four week intentional email newsletter series that has to do with whatever your offer is? Are you doing pre-S's in your email newsletter? Are you talking about it on social media, doing a countdown? Like all of these tactics are really the excite guidepost. And then Assure is gonna be pulling people from Propose over to Sell, and this is really gonna be, what can I do during my launch or what can I do during my selling um, vehicle in order to assure someone that I can solve their problem? And you're gonna come up with all different creative ideas here, but for us, Roadmap Preview is kind of how we do that. Um, this is a tactic that came up with, it's like, if somebody can see the roadmap for 48 hours, that's gonna assure them the quality of our work, our coaching sessions, silly what they're gonna jokes. get, our silly jokes, our personality, yep. and that works really well for us. And then finally, over on the reassure side, this is after you've sold your offer, what's that immediate first touch point that you can reassure someone that they made a really good decision by buying your offer, right? Like, can you surprise and delight? Can you offer a welcome sequence? A lot of people forget about this stage right after sell because the more that you can elate someone after they, you know, paid you money, the more that they can, they're then going to be a word of mouth marketing vehicle for you. So this is our onboarding sequence, our welcome sequence. Yeah, and just to answer the question that came up in the chat, yeah. uh, lead magnet in the attract section, anything, a quiz, an ebook, a mini course, like we anything have, you can think yep. of that attracts someone that's more than just get on my email newsletter or subscribe to my podcast or you know subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's something that attracts them more than just the actual mechanism of the thing. And we're gonna show you a couple examples with more of those attract options, excite options, assure options. Uh, yeah. We have five of those coming. For attract, you wanna ask yourself, what's my nurture channel and why would somebody want to go there? Which yeah. we're gonna break down each one of these. Um, and again, just for a visual here, your excite is what's pulling someone from your email newsletter into this the to engage with your sales sequence. Assure is what's pulling someone from propose over to your sales page, right? To your chef's kiss offer. Mm. And so just the visual there is that like each of these guideposts is really pulling someone down the bridge. So let's dig in a little bit deeper just so you can fully understand each of these guideposts. So attract is gonna be between find and nurture. So you're gonna say, what can you offer that will attract someone to your nurture channel? 
What will make a stranger interested in taking the next step with your brand? So you're just gonna figure out, and this is why the, the first stage of saying what the four stages are on your path is so important, because you can't figure out your guideposts if you don't know what your bridge is. Because it's so dependent on what is the channel of one stage and what is the channel of the other one, and like what am I trying to do in between? Yeah, because it doesn't make any sense, just as an example. Yep. In the fine stage, if you're writing articles, on the articles to like do pre-roll ads on your podcast to get someone to buy your thing. Like they're, they're incongruent, they don't match up. So you need to get someone to go from the articles to the newsletter or to subscribe yeah. to or the podcast that, that another, matches up Another better. perfect example is like at the bottom of my articles, I have follow me on Instagram, but Instagram is not my nurture channel and I don't post there. All you did, right? yeah, all you did was just like, you just send them somewhere that doesn't help you at all. Yep. So let's say my fine tactic is gonna be SEO via articles, and let's say my nurture tactic is gonna be my email newsletter, trust email newsletter. What is gonna be this little half step in between that's gonna pull someone from my articles to my newsletter? And we already talked about this is why so many people offer a contextual lead magnet on the article. Yep. Top of the article, middle of the article, whatever it is. Whatever it is, ebook, quiz, et cetera. But as we just mentioned, your guidepost will depend on what channel you're moving someone from and what you're moving them to. So let's just change this a little bit around and see how this works out. Let's say now my nurture channel isn't an email newsletter. Let's say I really wanna nurture people on my podcast. So I still wanna find people via articles and search, but I really want people to head over to my podcast. Okay, the lead magnet maybe is not making sense because I'm not gonna send out emails, right? So instead, I'm gonna embed episodes related to the article of my podcast and I'm gonna say, subscribe to my podcast. I, you know, episodes every Monday, here's a related episode you're gonna wanna check out, right? So again, you're thinking, where am I trying to get them from? Where am I trying to get them to? And what is a, a mini bridge that I can like kind of pave in between those two channels? What can I do to attract them? And just to further show this example, let's say now I'm switching out my find is gonna be Instagram content. Okay, and I wanna take them to my nurture channel of my podcast. So my tactic could be teaser reels, sharing nuggets from my podcast episodes and always having a link to subscribe in my Instagram bio because that's gonna be my nurture channel. So all of my find tactics I'm trying to funnel there. This is what an attract guidepost is. So now let's move on to our next guidepost which is gonna be entice. Mm. So how can you entice someone before you propose your pitch? What will make a warm lead more likely to consider your offer pitch? This is what you wanna ask yourself. So let's say I'm trying to get someone from my email newsletter interested in my two week sales sequence. The purpose of the entice is again to connect those two. So to like have someone be more likely to engage with our two week sales sequence, right? Like how am I gonna do that? And so one, of, one idea could just be the pre-S. This is why we do the pre-S for like the two or three weeks leading up to a launch. It just cues somebody to like pay attention. Like, oh, we're gonna start sending emails. I'm a little loosely interested in this. Even better if you can entice in that pre-S message, say like a couple of benefits of what your offer is. You're, you're really speaking to like, why would somebody be interested in this offer that you're gonna give them? But maybe let's change this around. Let's say instead of a two week sales sequence, let's say I wanna do a live workshop pitch. So this is often why you see people doing webinars or live workshops, because if they don't have an open and closed launch, if I just spin up a workshop, I get people from my email newsletter to sign up for this workshop, and then I just pitch my offer right there at the end of the workshop. That is a tried and true marketing tactic, and we just wanted to show you how this concept you can start to kind of like look at marketing tactics out in the wild and go, oh, interesting, I see what they're doing there. Mm -hmm. You're trying to entice someone to the, the eventual proposal or the pitch at the end of the webinar and that's how they're gonna sell, right? Even better, like the next email that you get that has like a warm up to like someone selling something, be like, I see you trying to entice me I see right you now. Entice guy and post. I'm into it, I like it, yeah. I like it. Yeah, uh, so let's move on to the next guide post being assure. And so the idea here is what can you do to assure your potential customer that you're, you can solve their problem? What will make a person consider your offer step over the threshold to buy? So again, it's contextual to whatever you're selling, whatever that offer is in that last stage. But let's say it's a two week sales sequence is where you're proposing your offer. And then the thing that you're selling is Wham Unlimited over on your sales page. So like, what is something in between that can make someone more likely to really go to the sales page and finally take that step to buy? And again, we've talked about how the roadmap preview really works for us for that reason. But let's say that you were gonna try to sell a design package and your proposal tactic was gonna be sending a proposal email. This is how a lot of you um, 
client service people, you, you send a custom proposal, you say, here's how I can help you, here's what it's gonna cost, and you're trying to get someone to step over that threshold, so what can you do to assure them? And this was just an idea, I don't know if anyone does this, so if you do, let me know in the comments, but I was like, what if with my proposal email, I send a case study lookbook? Meaning, I'm a, you know, a website designer, and I say like, by the way, here, it's like packaging up your portfolio, but in like a much more digestible way. It's saying, hey, here's what we did for so-and-so, and here's the results that they got. Here's what we did for so-and-so, and here's how this looks. And you're really getting them to feel assured that their design package is going to lead to a positive impact on their, on their business. So always thinking through like, what's that extra mile I can go to really, you know, assure the person that if they're going to hand over their hard-earned dollars, that they're going to get um, a solution to their problem, right? And then finally, our reassure step. So what can you do to reassure your customer immediately after purchase? How can you make their experience so positive they will want to tell others in the future? So from Wayman Unlimited to then like it loops back around, right? So like back into find because of affiliates. And so some things that we've tried in the past, so we still have a welcome sequence, a dashboard tour to like really get people acclimated. And then in the early days, some of you will remember from way the back when, future days. the buyer future days, we did a physical box. So we sent like snacks and we sent a couple of fun little tokens. And when we were getting way off the ground, it was really important that people were taking a risk on us because it, we were so new. And so we wanted to go above and beyond and really surprise and delight people and assure them, reassure them <laughs> that they made a good decision. Cheryl. Snacks? snacks. Yeah, we did snacks. <laughs> Some of like our hardest marital days were shopping for snacks. snacks. Shopping for snacks, yeah. Um, so because I really had some key snacks that I wanted to send people, and Caroline. We didn't went agree. to like four. Pl anyway, it was yeah, yeah. yeah. We probably ended up just for the sake of our marriage. But. This is true. Um, would you now like to see a couple of marketing bridge recipes? Okay, so let's say that you are using Instagram as your find. Let's put it all together. Here. And let's say that you, uh, you know, are selling something on the end there, obviously. So you're going to create consistent Instagram content. This is the thing that you're using to find people. Your attract is. Going going to be a free quiz and you're going to link to it in your bio and you're going to mention it in your stories, reels, whatever I think whatever someone asked a question about quiz. They did. As an attract tactic. And that is absolutely where it can live. So An attractic. Stop nope, it. doesn't work. So from that free quiz, uh, you're going to get someone onto your email newsletter. So the idea is you're going to move someone there. After someone gets on your email newsletter, you're going to build a bonus email series and you're going to share that with them that they can get that via the email newsletter. So again, you're exciting them. Uh, that's gonna lead them up to a two-week sales sequence. And in this two-week sales sequence, you're gonna have a free lesson preview of your offer, and then you are going to sell them your online course at the end of that. And once you sell them, once they get on, you're gonna have a good onboarding experience. You're mm. gonna have a personal welcome email. So this is your example. Or a Let's, welcome video, that's another idea. Or a welcome video. Let's say that you use Instagram to sell an online course. Here is a marketing recipe for you to use moving forward. This is exactly- Try it out. How you can- See how it works. See how this all works. But it, it's also maybe helpful for those of you who use Instagram right now to sell an online course and you go, hmm, uh, I, don't use a, I don't use a quiz or any type of lead magnet. I'm not trying to get people on my email newsletter. I'm not giving them a bonus series leading them up to it. I'm not even really doing a sales sequence. I don't do any free lesson preview. All I do is post stories about my online course and no one buys. Interesting. It's because you're missing out on a large part of the bridge. Caroline, take the next recipe. <laughs> All right, let's do YouTube to offer. Okay. All right. We're going to find people using searchable YouTube videos. So like we're going to tag it and we're going to do tutorials so that people searching on YouTube are going to find our videos. Wow. Interesting. Mm. Then we're going to attract. I love how I like feel like a, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Like a mastermind. Totally. You know, do, do, then do, do, do. we're going to attract them by mentioning in every single video, our free PDF guide, mm. every video we're going to mention it. And we're not going to oh, care. Wayne. <clears throat> we're not going to care that we feel like, oh, like I'm, I'm just, I keep no. saying, I keep talking every about time. it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then that's gonna get them on our email newsletter. Yes. We're gonna send out a regular yeah. email. And then, this is actually just one that we came up with that could be fun. We're gonna do a private podcast. Let's do a private Leading podcast. up to the launch, we're gonna make it feel like a big thing. We're gonna be, do a whole series. It's gonna be related to what we're selling. Yeah. And we're gonna be like, oh, we did this like private thing for you. Yeah. And that's gonna get them all hyped to interact with our two week sales sequence, which we love. And then during the sales sequence, we're gonna do a whole behind the scenes video walkthrough of yeah. our membership, which is what we're selling. And this is something that I see people, this is a great assure tactic. 
that I don't see enough people taking advantage of. Actually, I learned this when we were doing competitive research for Tea Tree. So many of these other course platforms, you would be amazed at how many people do not show screenshots can't of even their see product the app. You can't on, even see the app. on their website. You can't even see the app. And so if you're not showing something to someone about what are, it's like, give them a little like test drive experience. Like, what am I gonna get when I hand over my credit card? Like, what am I gonna see? Yeah. How is the experience going to be? And if you're like, well, it's not, I don't want to show them before that. It's like, they're going to see it once they buy anyway. So you might as well set expectations. Yeah. And then I'm going to sell my YouTube membership academy. And then I'm going to have an onboarding sequence and a personal and welcome to Great. Date. So if you're using YouTube to sell some type of membership, here is an exact marketing recipe. Let's keep going. Uh, let's say you're going to use a podcast. So you're starting with a podcast. Let's say it's an artist podcast yep. and you have guests. Your well, guests, that's how they're going to share your episodes. That's how wonderful. you're going to find people. Uh, on your podcast, you talk about your free pricing your art guide. Oh, that sounds fascinating. That someone can go and Every download. Every episode. Every, Every episode. single episode. You're like, hey. You do it in the beginning. You do it in the forget. middle. At the very end, right when you're go closing, here. you're like, hey, so great to have everybody's earballs in my mouth. Now go ahead and get my free pricing your art guide. I don't think that was great. To nurture these people to get the free pricing guide, they're going to sign up to your newsletter. And then maybe you even give them a private Instagram community another, feed. Another idea I just had. That because, could be really fun. Because then I was thinking also, you have to think about who your ideal customer is. Perhaps artists, they don't want to read long email newsletters. Maybe. Maybe yeah. they just want something more visual. Have a private email community or a private Instagram community. Yeah. You accept them, they get on the private it's thing. Great. It's like secret. I love it. Then to excite them, to get them ready for uh, you launching and promoting your thing, you're going to do a countdown and a teaser video in the private feed. So you have this private Instagram feed. You're going to use that. You're going to also maybe do a countdown in your emails. Then you're going to have a one week spring sales event of all of your art courses. So there was someone who was talking earlier about like, can my offer be like a bunch of my art cor totally. courses? People buy? Absolutely. It sure can. Uh, then you're going to assure people during that one week sale of case study images, testimonials, before and after images. Wayne was in the chat. He was saying that when he sends out client proposals, the testimonials tend to be one of those things that assure people to make the sale. This is something you can do as well, even to sell courses. Then you end up selling your art courses. Once that's done, you give some a bonus after joining your favorite art supply guide. They're like, uh, I didn't, like, even, didn't even, even know it was coming. Surprise and delight. Hey, if you're an artist and you have a podcast and you want to sell your art courses, here's a marketing plan for you. Carol, go on. <laughs> we have one more, I think, or two maybe. SEO to client package. Okay. Our fine tactic is going to be SEO articles. Okay. We're going to track people using a free website audit. We'll audit your website for yeah. free. You're going to have some type of like contact or fill out form. Hand in hand combat. Let's do it. Hand in hand combat. When you, you're going to nurture by sending that personal audit email and then inviting them to your email newsletter. That's yeah. where you're going to nurture them and you're going to like create a rapport, create a conversation. You can also then like, then because you sent them the audit, you can like follow up, right? There's like an even side channel. Then you do a free video consult with ideas. So you have some type of way to excite them and just say, Hey, you like sign up for 15 minutes of my time and we'll chat about ideas for your website and like what it could. And then they're like, they fall in love with the idea. Yeah, and they're yeah, like, wow, yeah. this person is so knowledgeable. And you're like, Oh, let me just send you a proposal of like what we could do for you. Then you send a proposal. They, even if they say no, you follow up two months later, you send them another proposal and you say, Hey, I actually got room in my schedule. And I, you can't work with me this way anymore, but you can actually work with me this way for like a different price. Would you want to do that? And then you send them a process PDF packet with case study examples. You're like, here's nice. my process. Somebody's Love like, it. wow, this is, this is super profesh and process. I wow. want to be a part of that process. You must know SEO. And then you sell their web, web design package. And then right after they sign up for your web design package, you send them to a client teachery hub and they're like, what? I have There's a whole a place dedicated just to me? And a welcome packet and they're like, this is so profesh. And they are like, I am so reassured that I just spent really good money and that this is gonna work for me. If you use articles to sell web design packages, here's a marketing recipe for you. I believe we have one more. Oh gosh. Paid ads. You're using paid ads on Facebook or Instagram? Fantastic. How about a mini course challenge that you can get someone to sign up for? And when they do, they get on an email sequence. It's automated. You don't have to send this out as a newsletter. You have this already set up. We have a little coaching session on this. Then uh, during or leading up to the sale, you're going to do a private interview series and bonus template just for your email audience. And that's going to get them excited about the one week automated sales sequence that you're going to give them that's already tacked on to the end of the automated sequence that they joined to begin with. And in that, you have testimonial video videos peppered of customers customers who have bought your thing, which is your awesome niche course that you wanted to sell, whatever your course is about. And then after someone buys, they get a really good onboarding experience, plus some bonus for you that you came up with. And if you use paid ads to sell a course, here is your marketing. This was the last one. And before I move on, the point I want to make here is like, the answer is not any one of these. It's yeah. you and your business. 
it's just to show you how to use this framework to to write down every single stage for yourself of what tactic you wanna try. Yeah. And to think about it as one continuous journey that you are sending someone from a cold stranger, they don't know who you are, to a warm buyer. Right? We wanna take those cold people and we wanna make them warm. warm. That's all we're trying to do. Great. All right, Carol, let's wrap up the explainer here. Point being, when it's all said and done, eventually you can build up to what we would call a multi-channel approach, right? Where like, Eventually your bridge might look something like this. This is ours where you have lots of channels of where you're finding people. You have several different ways you're attracting them. Right now we're testing our quiz. We're testing our cl our new client off ramp starter kit on our homepage and our most popular lead magnet. So those are the three that we track and we test and optimize for. Um, then, you know, you're, we're nurturing them in three different channels. Yes, we have our email newsletter. It works the best for us, but also when we're making YouTube videos, that's a nurture channel. Our podcast is a nurture channel where, and then it all kind of goes into this one approach before our launch where we do our two week sales sequence, but we also have pre-roll ads on our podcast cause that's our nurture channel. We assure them and we're always testing little different ways to assure people better. And then we sell our one primary offer being Wayman Unlimited, and then we reassure, and again, we're testing those as well. And then um, the reason that we don't have one down here is because affiliates are kind of filling in those stages for us, um, all of you, when, yeah. when we're selling as well. So eventually it gets more complicated, but yeah. the point that we want you to get from this is if you can find that one path, that's when you can start to add on more channels, right? Yeah, and what I was gonna say here is just, Imagine you're just taking like one line of this. So you're just doing like articles to quiz, to newsletter, to the lead up, to the two week, to the roadmap, to like just like the top word of all of this. And that's just like one example. Again, it's like another recipe that you can do for your business to be able to go from find to sell. So just to point that out. Uh, all right, deep, dive deeper. There are so many sessions that we mentioned in this, but that's what these spotlight sessions are for. Again, we're just scubaing here, but if you, uh, or we're just snorkeling, if you want to scuba, you can go into the content salad session. Uh, you can go into the quiz for email growth. If you want to uh, learn how we set up a quiz to grow our email list, I think it was by 400%, which we're not going to say everyone can do that, but it was incredible that it did. The email course session, if you want to set up automated email courses, uh, our sales launch session, we mentioned a two week open and close sales launch multiple times in this session. We break that down entirely for you with pre-marketing tips, with affiliate tips, all that's in there. Podcasting session, if you're getting ready to start a podcast, you're excited about it. Uh, in that session, we don't talk about private podcasting because we just started doing that with Wayne. So maybe we'll do something on private podcasting later on. Uh, but these are all the dive deeper resources if you want to dive deeper on this. All right, Carol, the last piece. Last piece of the marketing puzzle, we're not gonna go too far into this, but data. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So measuring data is going to help you see what spots on your marketing bridge path need to be strengthened. So this is kind of the final thing that you really wanna put in place. Figuring out your path is just one step, um, but also measuring it is important. So we have kind of like a bare bones basic um, thing in your workbook for you to do this. You can make it work for however you plan to track this, but let's just say for example, using like round numbers, like, okay, I tracked a thousand people in my find category came to my website for my articles or whatever. And then 10 new people a week came to my attract lead magnet, right? That's where you might track that and go, okay, my lead mag magnet is converting at 1% currently, 10 people out of a thousand people who came to my articles where I was promoting it. Can I get that to 2%? Like that would be your way. That's the reason that you track all these things is because you have hard numbers to go like, okay, how, what new tactic can we try and see if that moves the needle in that category? But the one thing I'd say is, first of all, you wanna decide what metrics you're gonna to plan to measure at each stage. And this is not like super technical. So like, just to give you an idea, you, you wanna just get an idea of how that particular part of your path is functioning. So for us, usually for our find stage, we're measuring our website traffic. Usually for our attract stage, we're measuring new email subscribers to our lead magnets. Nurture, we're measuring email clicks by week. Like is that, because like open rates are kind of hard to track accurately, but in general for a per percentage, are people clicking through our emails? Are they engaging in some way? Um, for our entice channel, we measure how many people click the first email of our sales sequence, since that seems to be like a fairly uh, good proxy for like how, it, you know, how well did we do enticing people to find out about our launch coming up. For our proposed stage where we're sending that two week sales email sequence, how many clicks are we getting to the sales page from our sales emails? We're just keeping an eye on that. 
And then how many people clicked to the roadmap and purchased? So like how effective was the roadmap in actually getting people over the threshold of buying? Mm -hmm. And then of course, finally sales. So these are all, listen, it's not a perfect science. It's just a way for us to go launch by launch. How well did this pathway work in order to get to sales? Yeah. And you can track these things weekly or monthly or by launch or however you wanna do it. Um, if you're a solopreneur or a small team, please don't overthink this. Even just rough and dirty metrics are better than nothing. So yeah. just, even if all you did was, what's my traffic? How many people are signing up for my lead magnet? And how many sales am I getting? Please do that rather than nothing. Don't like overthink it too much. Um, but metrics has really what has helped us. Like for example, when we did the quiz, yeah. seeing, okay, once we put up the quiz, how much did that help our conversion to our, our attract? But also they're not fancy. They're just rough and dirty. They're rough and they're dirty. All right, explain or recap. Understand the four main stages of a marketing bridge. Identify the channels and tactics that you want to experiment with for your marketing bridge. Define your clear path from stranger to customer. Use guideposts to improve conversions between your stages. Measure the metrics that matter for your bridge on a weekly or monthly basis. And keep experimenting and optimizing. Double down on what's working and switch up what's not.